Hello everyone and welcome again to Pimo Secrets and as always, this is Maureen Oshumakide. So we are on point 10 of my second season in this my 40 life lesson and I'm pretty excited because this particular point wraps up the second season and what does it say it says my wealth is not defined by my material possession but by my circle of influence this particular point is kind of connected to the last episode where I talked about what the blessing is and I said the blessing is not about what you have money possessions or wealth it's about the person of the Holy Spirit it's about the covenant it's about the status so today we're talking about my wealth is not defined by my material possessions because those things come and they go remember the guy that came to Jesus you know, and he was talking about how, and Jesus said that this guy's heart is far from him. He is. Why? Because his heart is, his soul is tied to the things that he has. And he says the life of a man does not consist in the amount or the abundance of things that he possesses. That is not how your life is defined or determined. Relationship is a valuable currency. People think dollars, uh, pounds, sterling, naira, euros are the only currencies no relationship relationship is an expensive currency i will cite two or three examples in the life of jesus and then i will share my own personal example when jesus was going to go into jerusalem for the you know the triumphant entry he sent his disciples to someone not mentioned we don't we didn't know who the person's name was but I believe Jesus had a relationship with that person. There wasn't anywhere that he was told in that interaction between Jesus and his disciples that he gave them money and said, when you get there, pay for it. Give the he said, I just go. In fact, he was like, go ahead and lose, you know, the, the donkey. He said, but if anyone should stop you, per adventure, he says, just mention that the master had need of it. I believe the owner of that donkey had a relationship already with Jesus and they already discussed about it. And so when he needed the donkey, it wasn't about money exchanging hands. He needed the donkey, relationship provided it. What about when he was going to have his last supper in the upper room that was well furnished? I remember a time my husband was preaching on this and you know, he said something, sounded like a joke, but then who knows, it might actually be true. That who knows, probably Jesus, while he was, you know, working as a carpenter, was the same person that furnished that upper room. And maybe he didn't collect money from that guy at that time. And he told him, a time is coming that I am going to need this place. Relationship provided that upper room for him. He just sent, he said, go there. You will see an upper room, well furnished. Prepare the last supper for me there. What about even after he had died? And the disciples could not go to Pilate to demand for his body because they did not have um, the measure of influence that was re required. Remember also that they were looking for them. They went into hiding. But it took a man called Joseph of Arimathea who had a relationship with Jesus. How be it, he was a secret disciple of Jesus. But I'm telling you that Jesus had relationship with some people that were not one of his known disciples or, you know, uh, followers that were known to everyone. Joseph of Arimathea did two things in the life of Jesus even after his death. He went and he demanded for his body because he had the authority to do so. He was a wealthy man and a man of authority in the city at that time. And then secondly, he donated his own tomb. I can imagine what that tomb must have looked like. He built it for himself and he donated it for Jesus and he said they should put him in that tomb. Now, it wasn't Jesus' money that got him that tomb. It wasn't that Jesus paid for that upper room where he had his uh, last supper. Neither was it that he paid for the donkey that, you know, rode him into Jerusalem. It was relationship. Relationship is a form of currency. 
relationship is an expensive currency. I recently traveled, you know, went on a family holiday, and I tell you, one of the greatest things we enjoyed as a family in all the places we went to was the gift of people, relationship. I tell you, money could not have given us those things. Even if you had all the money in the world, it wouldn't give you the warmth of another friend, you know, sharing that moment with you, taking you out for an ice cream, taking you out for a pizza. Relationship is golden. Value the people God brings into your life. Value the relationship you have around you. It is an expensive currency. You really don't know when you're going to need it in the near future. At that time, even if you had all the money in the world, you would not be able to get yourself out of whatever it is, except uh, just by a phone call, a friend that you had known, a relationship, a valuable one at that, you know, will bail you out of that situation. I pray and hope that this has blessed you. Uh, I look forward to reading from you, your comments, they are valuable to me as well. And like I mentioned earlier on, this is the last uh, point on the second season. And I'm going to be starting the next episode, you know, uh, with the season three. And it's an exciting one because it's on love and marriage. I know a lot of you like love talks, I know. So don't worry, I have it all, you know, ready and all of that. And um, I encourage you to look forward to my next episode because we're going to be starting a new season. Thank you for joining with me so far. I truly appreciate. God bless you. <music>